One of the reasons I think there's so many overdrive pedals and vintage style valve amps on the market is because for an electric guitarist, your overdrive sound really is the core sound of the instrument. Yet sometimes you might notice that some players can seem to take any basic overdrive tone and just make it sound amazing. And in this video, I'm gonna try and show you that it's not just some magical gift they've got. It's something that you can learn and develop to make particularly your core overdrive tone sound just the way you want it to. Now these tips might seem quite basic at first, but stay with me. We're gonna go quite deep into each of these concepts and there just might be a little bit more to it than you first think. So this first tip I think is often overlooked and it's how to get from a very bright, sharp, kind of high mid focus sound to a far more rounded full bloom to each note. So you can see initially it's a very simple concept. You play nearer to the bridge for a brighter sound, you play nearer to the neck for a warmer sound. But before we get into the more nuanced stuff, I'll just give you um, an example of how it can make an arpeggiated chord part sound almost harp-like compared to the brighter sound of picking near the bridge. Of course, those are extreme examples. What you're far more likely to see and what I find myself doing a lot are these subtle shifts along the string as I'm playing, just trying to tune into the overdrive sound and fine tune it. So for example, if I've got an overdrive sound that's in danger of sounding a bit muddy on the thicker strings especially, I'll move along to the bridge for a sort of high mid boost. See if you can hear what I'm talking about. On the thinner strings, you're more likely to drift towards the neck to stop the notes from sounding too harsh or shrill. It takes away some of the attack and also kind of compresses the note a little bit as well. Remember, all these subtle adjustments are normally done subconsciously and to taste. There's no right or wrong place to play on the string. But when you're comparing overdrive sounds and trying to get the tone just right, I think this stuff becomes really important. This next thing, again, is really simple, but we're gonna go deep with it, so stay with me. When you're using a kind of lightly overdriven sound, how hard you pick the string doesn't really change the volume of the note that much. It has a bigger effect on the tone, and in particular, like the saturation, how much overdrive you're actually getting, as well as the attack and decay envelope of those notes. So if I play a jazz line, listen to how clean and even the notes sound when I'm playing gently, compared to when I dig in a bit and play hard. So if you're getting harsh, unwanted, ice pick type highs from your amp, consider maybe adjusting your playing technique before you splash for that clom pedal or that vintage dumble amp or whatever it is. Um, not to say that you should play everything gently though. Uh, if I play a rock riff, listen to how, if I play too gently, it almost stops being a rock riff at all. It kind of needs that assertive attack for it to sound right. <laughs> Here's tip three, but before we get into it, if you're finding this video useful, maybe think about liking the video, maybe subscribing to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this on how to improve guitar tone and exploring pedals in different ways. So tip number three is really just tips number one and two and understanding how they affect each other. So if I play close to the neck, but really hard, what tends to happen is the notes ring out quite sharp before settling to the original pitch. Sometimes it's only subtle, but see if you can hear it. It works quite well, I find, for kind of big dynamic chord hits and stuff like that. hard close to the bridge the same thing doesn't happen um, there's too much tension in the string there so the tuning is fine 
all you get is this very bright attacking sound. I find it's really good for when you want to stop a neck pickup from sounding too dull or muddy. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments if these are techniques that you already use, if they're new, or if you have any techniques that you use that I didn't mention to help your overdrive tone. It'd be great if you could share that down in the comments. Um, these tips obviously apply to clean and distorted tones as well. I just feel that uh, they're most applicable to that kind of bass overdrive tone, which so many guitarists, including myself, kind of obsess over. So hope you found this video useful. If you did, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.